بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to welcome you brothers and sisters to this episode of Diaries of an Exorcist um, Insha'Allah I'll get straight into it I want to mention perhaps people are asking can children be affected can children be affected by the shayateen, by the jinn. Is it possible for a child to be possessed? Is it possible for a child to be afflicted with magic uh, or some other illness pertaining to the jinn or related to the jinn? Ikhwani, I want to mention uh, an incident which I went to. The brother rang me and he said that my child, we normally, it's our, it's our routine that whenever our child goes to sleep, we recite Ayatul Kursi on him, we recite, we recite uh, Surah Ikhlas, Surah Falaq, Surah Nas. And recently when we've been doing this, the child has started to laugh and now he's saying, oh stop, you're tickling me or stop, it hurts. So the child now is no longer reacting in a normal way. He's having a major reaction when his mother is reciting upon him. A point of benefit here, Ikhwani, when we have children, it's extremely important for us to recite over our children as a means of protection. So we recite on our children and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them. The Prophet alayhi salatu salam, he would put his hand on the head of Hassan and Hussein and then he would uh, make the dua وَعِذُكُمَا بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّ مِن كُلِّ شَيْطَانٍ وَهَمَّ وَمِن كُلِّ عَيْنٍ لَامَّ So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he would make dua for his grandchildren Hassan and Hussein رضي الله عنهم and he would ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect them from all evil or uh, every evil eye, every evil shaytan and this is something that we should do upon our children and it shouldn't be something that we do as a reaction we think maybe they're suffering with evil eye maybe there's something wrong here no rather we should do this every single night every single night we should be reciting on our children as a means of protection because they're not able to recite on themselves at this young age so this is what this man was doing and so I went to visit him I went to visit him and before I'd even arrived the child knew I was coming the child knew I was coming, the brother told me, he said that when you pulled up, and I pulled up quite a way outside of their house, he said when you pulled up, the child said, the man is here, the man is here. So then I entered into the house and I was sat in the front room of the house and the child was in the back room and he said, mommy I don't want to go in, I don't want to go in, I don't want to see him. So again, Ikhwani, it seems that the, the shayateen, the jinn, they know when we are going to come, not because they have knowledge of the unseen. Knowledge of the unseen is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it seems that the shayateen, they are able to recognize when a raqi is going to come to them. Why do they have knowledge of the unseen? No, Ikhwani, knowledge of the unseen is only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No prophet, no messenger, no awliya, no person, no jinn, no, nothing of creation knows the unseen, except for Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But it seems that the Qareen that is with us, then they go ahead and they tell the jinn, the Raqi is coming for you, or the Qareen that is with the father or the parents, they know. So many a time you will go and the person recognizes that you are coming before you actually get there. Before you actually get there, and this has happened many times. So we laid the child down, we lay the child down, and I started with the recitation. Ikhwani immediately he started to cover his hands, he started to cover his ears with his hands, immediately he tried to roll away, he tried to turn away, he was closing his eyes, he was screaming. This child was having quite a big reaction and they were speaking in a language which is unknown to me, the, the father and the child and the father was explaining to the child, look, listen, and, and just control yourself. And the boy, he didn't want to listen. He says, no, I don't want to listen. And he started to kick his father, saying, why did you bring him, etc, etc. And he actually got quite violent, the, the child did. But alhamdulillah, after a period of recitation and reciting into some water and giving the, the child to drink, initially he didn't want to drink. Initially he didn't want to drink. So we, you know, we continued, continued, alhamdulillah, the child, he started to drink. And then afterwards, subhanAllah, the child calmed down completely. He calmed down completely and then after the end of the ruqya he says, I saw 
when you are reciting the surah as surah as safat was safati safa he says i saw that the jinn was burnt he said i saw the the jinn or i saw the thing burning subhanallah so we couldn't see it, but the child was able to see it. Normally when the person is afflicted, sometimes they are able to see these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them the ability or the, the, the tawfiq to see these things. So he says, I saw the jinn burning. Walhamdulillah, that child was cured by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhwani, the next thing that I want to mention, we get a lot of questions regarding how do I protect my house? How do I protect my home? from jinn, uh, you know, from all of these evil spirits, etc. How do I protect my, uh, protect my house? Ikhwani, the first thing, the first thing that you do to protect your house is to make your home a place in which the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going on. So you should be praying extra nawafil prayers in your home. You should be reciting Quran in your home. Another thing that you should be doing, Ikhwani, is making sure that your house is a place where the remembrance of shaitan is not going on. When I say the remembrance of shaitan, I mean with, the, uh, with films, I mean with like dramas, I mean with music. All of this ikhwani is remembrance of shaitan. You're not going to be pleasing Allah, you are going to be pleasing shaitan when you watch these things. So, if you have a house in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is being remembered, knowledge, Islamic knowledge is being sought, the Qur'an is being read, the Qur'an is being played, then alhamdulillah, this is a major step towards protecting your home. Another thing that you should do, ikhwani, is when you enter into your home, you should say Bismillah. Because if you don't say Bismillah, shaitan will enter in with you. Shaitan will enter into your home with you. So you should enter into your home and say Bismillah. When you leave your home, you, you should say Bismillah. Teach your children to say Bismillah. When you enter into the bathroom, make the dua. When you exit the bathroom, make the dua. Putting your clothes on, taking your clothes off, eating your food, everything that you should do should be commenced with the remembrance and the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing that you can do, Ikhwani, if you find that things are going missing in your home, if you find that um, you are getting uh, banging noises or things are going amiss or things are just not right, you feel there's an eeriness within your home, there's a particular room in the house where you enter that room and you feel like a cold shiver go down your spine, then you should be reciting Surat Al-Baqarah in your home from beginning to end. From beginning to end, you should read Surat, Surat Al-Baqarah from beginning to end. Every three days. Once every three days, make it your job to sit down and recite Surat Al-Baqarah. This will make your house, bi ta'ala, a place where the shayateen don't want to enter. Another thing that you can do, which is slightly less orthodox, but it seems to work with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is take some water. Take some water and make ruqya over the water. And we've mentioned the ayat in other videos. Make ruqya over this water, put it into a, uh, a spray gun and just spray it into the corners of the, of the house. I know a brother who, when he would sleep at a particular time in the morning, like 2 a.m., his door would start banging on its frames, would start banging very, very hard. And he would run outside and there would be nobody there and the children would be asleep. And so what happened, he started to make more adhkar in the house. He started to make more dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the house. He started to um, recite over water, spray into the different corners of each room of of the house and by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this is now stopped. So if you're getting this then you should be you know taking these steps to do these uh, different uh, actions that I've mentioned. Ikhwani I want to mention something and I want to focus on this in this video bi ta'ala is magic and its influence in spitting a husband and wife. Magic and its influence in spitting a husband and his wife. Why? Why is this important? Ikhwani, because in today's society we find that the divorce rate is extremely high. The divorce rate is extremely high. And the amount of people practicing magic is extremely, extremely high. If you're married, then you need to watch this, you need to educate yourself on this, so that you can stop any potential harm in its early stages. And if you are not married, then this is something good that you can look out for, educate yourself again, so that when you do get married, inshallah, you can again recognize these signs and symptoms, and inshallah, you can take the relevant steps. 
before I mention anything, I want to say that just because you may be, you know, you may have uh, experienced one thing or another thing from your spouse or you've seen something like this, doesn't necessarily mean you should jump to the conclusion of magic. However, However, at the same time, having said this, we shouldn't go the other way, we should be balanced, we shouldn't go the other way, which is, oh no, I'm not suffering, and we are in a state of denial. I can't be suffering with magic. Magic can't be afflicting me. Ikhwani, we should be balanced. So if we see these signs and symptoms, we shouldn't scream the house down and have a panic attack. At the same time, we shouldn't say, no, no, it's something else. Let's be balanced and say, okay, let's have some ruqya, insha'Allah. And you can do the ruqya upon yourself. There's no need to contact a raqi. You can do the ruqya upon yourself. This is the best and most pleasing thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the best in terms of tawakkul, reliance on Allah, that you carry out your treatment yourself. Okay, so one of the first things that I want to mention, ikhwani, is that when we get married and there is... Uh, you know, a, a lot of people gather and the news spreads. Ikhwani, unfortunately, we, we live in a society where people don't want to see others happy. People don't want to see others successful. People don't, people don't want to see others doing well or sorting their lives out and going onto the straight path. So you usually find that the bigger the circle of, uh, of, of like a walima or the bigger a marriage is today, it's custom to have a thousand, two thousand people. Very likely inside one of those thousand, two thousand people, somebody is not going to be pleased with the fact that you are getting married. And that's why we should stick to the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When it comes to nikah, when it comes to walima, there are so many benefits. And this is one of those benefits, something small and something not extravagant. This is closer to the sunnah. There will be more barakah in this, insha'Allah. So, ikhwani, you're with your wife now and you find that you can't get along. There always seems to be a small issue which is splitting you apart something very small and it turns into something very large or when you start arguing you start to become very abusive and you feel this isn't within my character or your spouse becomes very very abusive now you know your spouse you know the, the character of your spouse and this person is now acting out of character they're behaving out of character some of the things that they are saying perhaps normally they don't use foul language now they are using a lot of foul language there's a lot of cursing going on maybe you should then say, okay, one of these boxes has been ticked. Maybe this is a cause for concern. Sit them down and explain to them. Say, look, why do you use foul language? And if the person says, look, I just don't know. I just don't know. It just comes out. Maybe this is something that you should uh, sit up and take notice of. Or for our sisters, we find that they will lose large amounts of hair. A lot of hair loss. A lot of hair loss or the hair will begin to get very, very thin or um, they will begin to develop skin problems, they will begin to develop rashes, etc. And you'll go to the doctor and they'll put you on all the steroids and all the creams and nothing seems to work. Nothing seems to work. Again, perhaps this is something that you should sit up and take notice of. Another thing is feeling extremely lethargic. Always feeling like you want to do something, you have aspirations to do things things for your spouse or you have aspirations to do things around the home or aspirations to do da'wah or aspirations to do things to benefit the community but it just seems that you feel very lethargic and there's no energy you just feel like you know you feel you, you begin to get very depressed you almost um, you know feel like you don't have any purpose you feel like your life isn't going anywhere you start to think uh, suicidal thoughts perhaps you even start to self-harm perhaps you even start to self-harm and you start to feel these suicidal tendencies, etc. Again, maybe something to sit up and take notice of. Another thing, Ikhwani, is dreams. You start to dream. And a very, very common thing that seems to be uniform, almost uniform about, amongst people who are suffering from magic, is they will start to see uh, snakes in their dreams. They will see snakes either chasing them or they are running from snakes or they will see snakes that bite them or snakes that wrap themselves around them or they will see black dogs or dogs in general that are, again are chasing them or coming after them etc. Or you will begin to see uh, other animals, other predators which are coming for you. You may also start to see a lot of death in your dreams. So you start seeing dead bodies, you start seeing a lot of blood, you, st you start to see a lot of chaos and your dreams are becoming very very vivid your dreams are becoming very very vivid again perhaps something to take note of 
And with regard to dreams, uh, Ikhwani, I advise you, don't rush to seek uh, interpretation of dreams from every single person on every street corner because the interpretation of dreams is extremely extremely specialized it's a very special field I personally don't know of anybody inside of the UK who can interpret dreams well because you have to make sure that the person's aqidah is correct you have to make sure that his manhaj is correct you have to make sure that he has an adequate amount of knowledge when it comes to the interpretation of dreams you have to make sure that he's going to advise you and he has no ulterior motives and that he's sincere bi-idhnillahi ta'ala there are people in Medina that I know of but there is nobody in this country who I would say go to this person and seek interpretations of your dreams from. But these are very, from experience, these are very common signs that people who are suffering with magic, they exhibit these type of dreams. Another thing, while you are awake, while you are awake, you may find in the corner of your eye, you, f you see like shadows, black shadows, black clouds. And you think, did I see that? And you look and actually you think, no, no. And you, you begin to tell yourself you're just seeing things, you're becoming paranoid. If you start to see this on a regular basis, perhaps you're in the kitchen, perhaps you're downstairs, perhaps you're in bed. And you wake up in the middle of the night and it seems that there's something hovering over you. Or it seems that there's something you know, hovering in the corner of your eye, in the corner of the room, or something flashes by then again, a cause for concern. Another thing that you might see, Ikhwani, you might actually see a person. You might see a person standing at the foot of your bed. Somebody might walk over to you and try and grab you. You might see any of these things. Again, if you are seeing things, again, a cause for concern. You may start seeing things while you are awake. You might start seeing snakes. You might start seeing spiders. You might start seeing ants. You might start seeing any one of these things while you are awake. If you see these things, definitely contact a Raqi. It's time for Rukya now. Other things that you may see, Ikhwani, or you may feel, you may experience something which is commonly known in the medical field as sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis. So you wake up in the middle of the night and you just feel pinned to your bed. You are pinned to your bed and you feel like you are suffocating. It feels like there's something sat on your chest. There is a hadith which the Prophet ﷺ, he mentions this, where there is a type of jinn which goes around and it sits on people's chests and it causes them to become paralyzed. If you find yourself in this situation, do your best to recite whatever you can. Do your best, whatever words of remembrance of Allah come to your mind, Ayatul Kursi, even if you just start reciting La ilaha illallah, even if you recite La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah, Bismillah tawakkaltu ala Allah, Whatever it is that you can recite, recite at this time. And insha'Allah, this will be lifted from you. At that moment though, you should then again consider doing ruqya or consider having ruqya done upon yourself. Other things, ikhwani, marital relationships. You may find that you, you are unable to be intimate with your uh, partner. You're in, unable to be, become intimate with your spouse. There is no love in this particular way. Maybe it's been months and months and months since you've been intimate. Ikhwani, how is intimacy linked with destroying a marriage? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions how we are garments for one another. The spouses are garments one to another. And we have needs. We have physical needs as well as spiritual needs. And one of the physical ways that a spouse or a marriage it does this is it allows us to lower our gaze, protects our sexual chastity and our modesty. So if you find that you're not able to become to be intimate with your spouse, maybe this is a reason to cause uh, or to be a cause for concern. Other things, if you wake up and you need, you, you wake up in a state of janaba, and this is happening to you regularly. Maybe if you're a man and a woman is coming to you in your dreams, when you wake up, you need to make a ghusl, or, or the opposite is true for our sisters. Then maybe it's time for ruqya. Other things, ikhwani, you will begin to become extremely suspicious of your spouse. There's nothing to be suspicious of. There's nothing to be suspicious of. The person is of a good character and you know that this person is of a good character. But subhanallah, you will start to become suspicious of your spouse for no apparent reason. Every time their phone rings, every time they go out of the house, every time they are texting or whatever they are doing, you begin to become suspicious. And shaitan begins to whisper, whisper uh, doubts, whisper suspicions into your mind. And Ikhwani, this is very, very dangerous. Once that tree of suspicion takes root in a person's heart, 
it will begin to grow very, very quickly. Everything the person does, you'll begin to become suspicious about them. Very, very dangerous. Other things, Ikhwani, you may find that um, you can't be with one another. You, when you are together, you hate one another. There's this natural or there's a, a repulsion that you have. There is a repulsion that you are facing. You go together and you just don't want to be with each other. But then when you are separate, you miss one another. When you are separate, you want to be together. But then subhanallah, you become you know, close and then something separates you again. For the sisters, you find that inside the marital home, something is not letting you stay inside that marital home. Every time you're there, you have problems, you get these skin issues, hair loss, loss of sleep, bad dreams, suspicions, hatred, anger, uh, expletive, you know, expletives when you argue, you start arguing over little, little things, and then you go back to your mother's house, you go back to your father's house, and you're absolutely fine. You're absolutely fine with everybody else, so everybody else thinks there's nothing wrong. And nobody will accept that you're suffering with magic. But when it comes to you and your husband, you become a different person. Your spouse becomes a different person. Ikhwani, just some words of advice. If your spouse is suffering from magic, a lot of the times we have people and they go and they want to arrange meetings and they want to get their family involved. Ikhwani, magic is such a disgusting and disgraceful thing and such an evil thing that it will cause you, you enter into that home and all you went there for was for islah, you went there for reconciliation and for, for, for a bit of dialogue, you end up arguing. You end up arguing and you leave and now you've done more damage. Because if the problem stays between husband and wife, then alhamdulillah later on you can kiss and make up. But when the third party gets involved, ikhwani, it's very, very difficult for uh, those people to forgive and to forget. So I advise you for the husband and the wife when you are making ruqya or when you are trying to, uh, you know, to, to make reconciliation, try and do it with yourself and with the assistance of the raqi. Try not to get the family involved too much because in our society, unfortunately, they don't have knowledge of magic, they don't have knowledge of how it works, they don't have knowledge of ruqya. They're very quick to run to a bir sab or to a faqir sab and they will get da'wees and all of these uh, silly and, and weird and crazy things but subhanallah when it comes to reciting Quran they'll say well there's nothing wrong how is this going to benefit us so again try and keep it between yourselves and get the ruqya done without telling third parties because it's likely to lead to more confusion it's likely to lead to more confusion other things that you can do my dear brothers and sisters make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ مِنْهُمَا مَا يُفَرِّقُونَ بِهِ بَيْنَ الْمَرْءِ وَزَوْجِهِ وَمَا هُمْ بِضَارِينَ بِهِ مِنْ أَحَدٍ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that they seek that knowledge by which they seek to separate a man from his wife, uh, from his wife. but they are not able to afflict or harm anyone illa bi idhnillah except with the permission of Allah so this test is as a result and has come with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so turn back to Allah Turn back to Allah, make a lot of dua. Ikhwani, ruqya is a means by which we seek treatment. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is able to treat you and Allah is able to do all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just says, uh, be and it is. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if He wills, He will just give the order and you'll be treated. So turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and know that Allah has power over all things. Place your trust in Allah jalla wa ala, make a lot of dua, do a lot of fasting, optional fasting, give a lot of uh, zakah, seek a means to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, do plenty of good deeds sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then ask Allah, oh Allah I did this sincerely for your sake, so raise this uh, illness of my spouse etc. Other things that you can do, Ikhwani, if you have people who have knowledge of Ruqya and, uh, or at, at, the, at the Masajid, get those people involved and they will encourage your spouse. It's very, very likely that if your spouse is suffering from magic and then you say to them, you say to them, why don't you have Ruqya? They will explode at you and say, do you think I'm crazy? Do you think I'm possessed? You have all of the faults and now you blaming me? And so it will lead to an argument. So if you can maybe go through a third person or if you yourself, my dear brother or my dear sister, you yourself are recognizing I've lost my hair, we can't be intimate, we seem to be arguing for no apparent reason, you take charge of your own treatment. Don't leave it for somebody else. How many sisters and how many brothers contact me and they say, I'm divorced. I'm divorced but the elements of magic, the jinn still remains. Ikhwani, how many times does this happen? How many times does this happen? 
And this is from the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should be pleased with the decree of Allah, however and whenever we can. But subhanallah, it's better, isn't it better that you stay with your spouse? Then you find out later and you say, you know what? I should have done ruqya before. Khayr, bi ta'ala, we can cure this. Insha'Allah, we can cure this. But you have to take charge of your own uh, treatment. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a benefit for me and for you. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and our spouses from this evil of magic, from this evil of jinn. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect our homes and our children from, from the jinn and the shayateen, from amongst the people and from amongst the ins. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us with pious spouses who will be the coolness of our eyes. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us good spouses one to another in the dunya and to reunite us in Jannatul Firdaus al-A'la. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashadu wa la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.